Welcome back, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're gonna to take a look at another independent bottler, the Black Adder. This particular one is the Pete Reek Raw Cask Isla. So, I have never brought you a Black Adder before. They're an independent bottler. Uh, they do a number of different bottlings, very hard to get your hands on. This particular one is what they simply call as their Isla single malt scotch whiskey um, and it's, it says it's uh, sherry cast finished and aged 10 years. Other than that, not a lot of information on this particular one. I try to look up which distillery from Isla came from, try to look up uh, a few other things um, as far as the distillery and some of the processes. However, they are holding most of the details close to the vest. In Isla, Sherry cast finish, which means it probably shared uh, the majority of its 10 years in an ex-bourbon barrel. It was distilled on the 1st of December, 2006, and bottled in September of 2017. It's a 58.1% ABV or 116.2 proof. It's bottle 119 of 318. So if anyone has similar writing, you have the same bottle I do. Now, one thing you will not be able to pick up on the camera, I would imagine, is the fact that it has the black pieces of the actual barrel in this whiskey. And I am getting down to the bottom of the bottle, which was given to me by good friend Keith at the Malta Man Cave, and I have a lot of the uh, char chips left, if you will. And that's what they mean by raw cask. There is no filtration in this whatsoever. Um, even if you use the cask strength whiskeys, say like the little Freud 10, it's, the Freud 10 is still like barrier filtered to some degree to take out the wood and the pieces of chip. And I am telling you what, I know you probably can't pick this up really um, on the camera, but it's almost like a, like a snow globe. <laughs> it's just little pieces of wood in here. And the first time I saw it, I was just like, man, is this gonna make me sick? Uh, what's wrong with this bottle? And are you gonna call the, the, the independent bottler to get your money back because there's something wrong with the whiskey? Turns out, I'm the idiot. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just pieces of the barrel and I've been told they can't hurt you. So. Let's get into it. Let's see what we think of this uh, Black Adder Pete Week Raw Cask. Now, I've had some time to play with this, and I had some really unique smells, so I've kind of tried to narrow down exactly what I think I'm picking up here. And I tell you, the first thing that jumps out, aside from a lot of smoke, is peanut and peanut shells. Almost a peanut oil. Um, here in Columbus, Ohio, we have this place called um, uh, Five Guys Hamburgers. Pretty good hamburger chain. I think started out somewhere around in the New Jersey area. Um, and they have like peanuts everywhere. Like while you're waiting in line, if you're really hungry, you can grab a handful of peanuts, break them, eat them, and preferably throw them away properly. However, as many people do, um, they just throw them on the floor. And after a while, you kind of get that crushed peanut shell smell sort of in the air, which is kind of nice. Not that I'm a huge peanut fan, but it is a pleasant smell. I'm getting a lot of that on the nose. A ton of smoke and a good amount of spice. Um, I, I, I wanna say cinnamon because it's so spicy. I think just because it's a peated whiskey and it's a cast strength, but I'm thinking more probably clove. Probably a spicy hot clove. And then one other thing that um, is a little bit of time in the glass gives you, is you get a nice lemon and lime out of this. Now earlier I said it says Isla Cast and I couldn't find out you know, basically what distillery it came from. Here's my two thoughts on this particular one. Because I get the lemon and the lime, part of me thinks it might be Arvig. Now, I don't know Arvig, I know they do occasionally some independent bottlings. I don't know how many of them they've been doing recently, but my guess would be Arvig, perhaps Kalila, but I'd be pretty confident in betting it's one of those two distilleries. Well, that and the fact that if I pick two of the eight Isla distilleries, I got about a 25% chance of being right. All right, so we're gonna take a, another quick swirl around the glass. Try to get some of these pieces off of the side. It's a really thick, oily dram. And I guess that's probably something they were trying to get by just going with unfiltering uh, the whiskey whatsoever, basically just taking it from the cask to the bottle. Is they're probably trying to pick up some more of those fats and the oils that you would get out of just basic barrier filtering. filtering. Um, so let's take a sip, let's see if that comes through on the taste. That is a wallop. Whew. 
I tell you what, I've been pretty impressed with this whiskey. And though I didn't buy it, I've done a little research. Most places here in the States is going for $155 to $195. So this is again another one. I'm not quite sure of the exact cost, but I would guess it's between $150 and 200 bucks, or at least that's what Keith, I'm assuming, paid for it. On the palate, I'm still, I'm getting a ton of smoke, still getting those peanuts, peanut shell. Again, lime specifically, not lemon, on the palate. Again, I'm thinking Ardbeg. I'm thinking Ardbeg 10 here. And a woody, hot cinnamon um, sort of confectionery combo. It is, whew, man, it's got such a linger on the palate. It is cast strength 58.1%, but even after you swallow for 15, 20 seconds, man, it's just right there. Just popping. Let's see what else am I getting on that palate? There's a lot going on here. It's almost like, it's like a meaty finish, but almost like a swordfish meatiness. So, I don't know if you, how, if you guys have ever had swordfish. Swordfish is like a denser white fish comparatively to, to other fishes. And swordfish to me is like the steak of, of the sea as far as the thickness and the texture of, of the fish. And I'm really getting a lot of that. It's almost like swordfish on, cooked on a, um, like a, one of those cedar planks. And then you put the cedar plank, or you, 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 cook, you, you cook the swordfish and you put it on a cedar plank and you kind of serve it that way. I'm getting like that woody cedar chip swordfish meatiness along with just peanuts, cinnamon, clove, and I would say a little bit of lime. I'll tell you what, this one is, from the moment I tasted it, something I was incredibly, incredibly impressed with. Um, expensive whiskey for being only 10 years old. You know, you can get a lot of cast strength whiskeys like... I mean, Lagoon 112 is a bad example because that's about 120 bucks. But, you know, they have the Laphroaig 10. Cash strength is about 62 bucks here. So this is about double what that would be. So, you know, there is um, some question as far as value. But I would say it's probably a step a notch up from that whiskey, from the Laphroaig 10 as far as complexity, nose and taste. But I don't know if me necessarily would be worth such a heavy price tag. But fortunately, I was given the rest of this bottle as a gift. So I wasn't the one that had to pay for it. So thank you, thank you, Keith, over at the Malted Man Cave. If you guys never uh, checked out his channel, be sure to stop by and tell him hello. Keith uh, enables me to round out my whiskey reviews because it's obviously whiskey is super expensive. I can't buy them all. So he kind of uh, <laughs> supplements uh, my whiskey collection by giving me a few of these bottles that he, he was uh, fortunate enough to try. And I got to tell you, I love trying them. Now, this does say this was sherry cast finish which would lead me to believe it was mainly bourbon maturation, which again, makes me think more hard big. But I am picking up very few sherry notes in this whatsoever. I mean, really the predominant uh, smells and tastes are smoke, um, cedar, wood, spices, peanut. Really a, a strange combination that I really haven't experienced before in any whiskey. But it is something that I'm really enjoying and uh, if you guys ever had a chance to get your hands on it, I'd like to know what you think as far as smell and taste, only because I did not get a chance to drink the full bottle from start to finish. So by the time I got to it, it's been pretty consistent. Um, probably got this bottle two weeks or so ago with maybe a quarter of the bottle left. And every, every time I've gone back to a tasting, it's kind of been those same notes. However, I am interested in the peanut note because it's not something I really get a lot on whiskeys. So if you've had a peanut note come up in a whiskey before, or if you've tried this one and agree with me or, or disagree, please let me know in the comment section. Love to hear what you guys have to say about it. All right, so I added a little bit of water, kind of see what, see what it does as far as changing the nose. Peanut took a, took a little bit of a step back. It's still super smoky. Lemon and lime are far more in the forefront. Now, really, where I said spice, I said maybe clove. It's, it's kind of cinnamon now. Maybe a, a lighter or a white cinnamon, but it's still just right there. And you know, for 51.8%, it had a little bit of heat on it on the nose initially, and just a, just a few drops of water, or maybe just a, I would say a, a fifth of a cap full, it really took a little bit of an edge off that and really allowed me to appreciate some of the fruitier flavors like the lemon and lime. All right, last up time, give it a score, tell you guys what I think overall.
That is so unique. Ardbeg, Kalila. I really don't recognize fully either one of those, but there's pieces of each one that I pick up. Obviously the lemon and lime from the Ardbeg. And now with water, vanilla coming in. Again, makes me think Ardbeg. A bit of brininess that I usually associate with Kalilas is there as well. Now, I don't think it's a mixture. I think it's just one distillery, so I'm not sure which distillery it is. But that nice lemon lime with that vanilla mixed in subtly with that peanut shell, wood, swordfish, a little bit of cedar chips. Man, this is an extremely impressive whiskey. As a matter of fact, since the first time Keith let me try this, which was months ago, first thing I did was I researched the fact that this indeed was natural, that there were all of these little black flakes um, in here, and I'm gonna try to show that to you. Actually, that might be a little picked up pretty well on the camera. So basically, like I said, it's like a snow globe in here. So once I figured out that Keith was telling me the truth and that wasn't going to kill me, my next thought was, let's get, let's get another bottle for myself. Unfortunately, this is um, a little tricky to pick up. Ohio is the easiest place to get things shipped to. So I am still working on it. So if any of you guys out there know of any online distilleries, excuse me, online shops that will uh, ship out here to Ohio, let me know. Be much appreciated. As far as the whiskey score on this one, I don't have a ton of uh, history with it, but man, I am incredibly impressed with this whiskey. I'm going to go probably too high and tell you this is a 92 out of 100 in my opinion. I have been super impressed with it. Um, I think even at $150, which $150, $170, whatever Keith paid for it, I know it's a lot of money to pay for a whiskey, and there are better value buys out there, like the Lafroy 10 cap strength that I mentioned, but if it were me, um, because I will, I'm willing to spend $150 to $200 on a bottle of whiskey, if I saw this on the shelves, I would absolutely buy it. If you were a fan of Pete, I would say absolutely go for it. If you like some of the independent bottles like Pete Monster or any type of cap strength peated whiskey, I would say absolutely check this one out. Again, it's a little on the, high, little on the higher end as far as cost, but I think it's well worth it in my opinion. Anyway, thank you again, Keith, for giving me this bottle. And I want to thank you guys once again for stopping by to listen to another one of my whiskey reviews. Till next time, I will see you in the comments section, and I wish you happy drinking.